Hello friends, this is Vicki from StampsSmiles.com and I'm here to share a video tutorial with you for DigiDoodle Studios on how I made this really fun Halloween treat bag called a bagalope. And here is my decorated bagalope that I've used using their Ghostly Haunts digital stamp set from the Parables collection. I'm showing you that I've used a regular A2 size flat envelope and turned it into a really fun treat bag. And I have it decorated, all ready to go for Halloween, filled with treats for my favorite goblin. And I also thought this would be fun for Christmas too because you could fill it with a gift card. You can put a pocket on the back and put a gift card pocket on the back of it fill it with a handmade Christmas ornament or something and hang it on the tree. So this is really a fun optional project that you can create for pretty much any type of holiday or birthday or just a bag, little bag that you need for anything. So to get started, I am going to take this A2 sized envelope and I'm gonna take adhesive and I'm gonna go along all three edges to make sure it is sealed all the way around, completely sealed up so that it is closed because we wanna make sure that it, the bag is completely sealed up. Now you wanna decide which way you want your bag to go. Do you want it going horizontally across or do you wanna turn it and make it tall like I did on my bag? And then you need to decide how you want to cut the top of it. I have a little decorative zigzag on the top of my bag and I use some scissors to cut it. But what you can do is you can just go ahead and use like a paper cutter and just cut the side off. You can use decorative scissors. You can use a die cut, like a border die cut and just, um, create an opening by just cutting off the edge and decorating it however you want. Here I'm using my pinking shears and I'm just going to barely cut the top of the edge of the envelope off. And the reason why I'm barely cutting the top of it off is because the panel on the front of my bag is a little large and I wanted a little bit more room to decorate it up. And obviously, if you want to stamp directly onto the envelope or you want to die cut, like you want to put a handle there, you can use a word punch or a sentiment banner die or something like that to create a little handle or opening in it if you want. So moving on to creating the bag, I am using my scoreboard and I am scoring it at the one half inch mark on all three sides opposite the opening. And you can um, change how, how much, how big you want your bag, treat bag to be by changing the dimensions of where you score it. So I'm using a half an inch. So if you want your bag to be a little wider, you can try scoring all three edges at three quarters or one inch or something like that so that you can make your bag just a little bit bigger on the inside. But keep in mind, the larger that you make your score marks, the less room that you're gonna have on the front of your bag to decorate. So it just depends on how you wanna decorate your bag, what your personal preferences are with you know, how you want it to look because as I mentioned before, there are so many different options and things that you can do to play with. There's different ways you can create the opening. There's different ways that you can make the handle. You can die cut the handle in. You can use ribbons like I did on mine. You could use a piece, a strip of cardstock and go along the edges. Um, before I've also used like grommets or eyelets on on each end of the bag on the sides of it and then put some ribbon and ran it through that way. Right now you can see here, I'm just reinforcing the score marks and with the bone folder, you need to make sure they're really crisp because you're going to really manhandle it now to transform the envelope into your treat bag. Here you can see I put my hand th through the opening all the way back to the end of the bags and I push the bottom of the envelope to create the bottom of the bag. 
And now I'm just reinforcing all of the edges and corners. And you can see those little points on the end. Those are really important to reinforce and make sure that those are really crisp. Be those are what I call cat ears. That's what they look like to me. I am just um, using my bone folder to reinforce them and I wanna make sure that I go as closely along the edge of it as I can and make sure that those are flat and they're not puffy and sticking out because it's just gonna make your bag kinda go together. But you can see that I'm really trying to reinforce all of the score marks the best that I can um, to make it so that it stands up like you want it to. And then I'm taking the sides of the bag and um, those inserts that are popping out, the center that's popping out, I'm pushing it back inwards. And you can see that I'm just using my hands and bone folder to reinforce everything to make it come together as my treat bag. And now I'm just using some adhesive. Um, you can use any adhesive you want. If you want something, you know, a little bit more sturdy, honestly, it's just a little tiny triangle to adhere to the bottom of your bag, but you might want it to be a little sturdy so that it sticks better. So if you have a better glue or like score tape or something like that, that you want to reinforce it in. Um, you can see I'm kind of fiddling more with my bag and trying to get all of the score marks down and try to pop my bag into the position that it needs to go so that it looks nice when you got it completely done. And then it's all folded together and there it is. It st stands up by itself and it's all ready to decorate and be filled with treats however you want. So here I'm showing you my bag that's completely done. I have made my own design paper right here with the web uh, with the web image from the Ghostly Haunts digital stamp set from Digi Doodle Studios. And I've also made this other fun little Lumiere that I've also created using the same bagalope technique with a vellum styled envelope that I have. These are larger uh, envelopes that I have and I've had them for a really long time, but I thought they would make the perfect Lumiere with these cute little ghosts. And here I'm showing you that I've used some more of that um, decorative paper that I've created. And there I have actually uh, heat embossed it with some clear glitter uh, embossing powder over top of them to give it a little bit of a sparkle. And I even put a little ghost on a little clothespin clip to close it. So you can see there's many options, um, not only to decorate these fun little bags, but there's a lot of options for closures and handles and you know the sky's the limit on this thing and I think it's just so fun and here you can see I have the little tea light uh, battery operated candles on the inside of my lumineer I shut the lights off doesn't look like I really did but I shut the lights off so you can see it glowing on the inside of the bag and I think that's such a fun idea especially for Halloween but Obviously, you can use a lumineer for Christmas or, you know, anything that you want. And when you don't want it to be a lumineer, you can use it as a gift bag, too, which I think is so fun. And here I'm showing you the vellum envelope that I have. These are huge. They're like six and a half inch square. <laughs> so I'm, I wasn't done, so I wanted to show you uh, a card that I made with the same Ghostly Haunts uh, digital stamp set. I printed it out on paper and then I printed out another one on masking paper and cut out the images because I ink blended the background and I used the moon um, by just uh, cut, die cutting a circle and putting it on there and then ink blended and then I colored in all the images after I ink blended and added a little die cut fence and the sentiment just cracks me up. I absolutely love that. This was so fun to play with. And I look, I still have more design paper left, but I had so much fun with this. So I hope you enjoyed my tutorial. And I hope you check out the Ghostly Haunts digital stamp set from Digi Doodle Studios. Thanks so much for stopping by, friends.